It started when I worked for Theatre Corporate, which is a long time ago. There was this wonderful lady, Eve Schloop, who had come in to work with Raymond and she'd done pattern making. I think she'd run her own boutique in the 30s, so she'd done really detailed pattern making and she taught me. So I was working in the wardrobe then, working, learning the craft. I suppose from her, so I didn't design, but then I started doing design for dance as a little sideline, and so I worked with Lim's Dance Company, so, so that was in the 70s, 80s. <laughs> yes. Even though I do do a fashion brand that's ready to wear and it's off the rack, I do do, I've been doing fashion shows for 15 odd years at Fashion Week, at New Zealand Fashion Week, so you do make garments that are just for the show, so I'm very aware of movement um, with the garments. So I'm well aware of construction, that they have to be breathable, move, you know, that kind of thing. So I did change, I just doubled it up. Like I made it more larger than life because it's on stage and people are going to be viewing it. So I did, you know, in terms of fabrics and, um, and you know, exaggerating the arm or something like that, I added that into it just because it needs that exaggeration um, for stage? The design process is quite an involved one. Um, once I'm asked to design a project, I go off at a tangent. I read the script a couple of times. I'll do my research completely independently of the team. Then we get together, and if it's Colin, for example, who's the director, we get together with the set designer, the lighting designer, sometimes the musical director or composer, and I all sit around a table and brainstorm. Sometimes Colin has a really clear vision of the piece, which he'll share, and other times not. So other times I can come in with some ideas. Nil Gwynn is an example. I came in with some visual imagery. I now use Pinterest, so I put a lot of images on, on a Pinterest board and share them with Colin even before that meeting, so that I know I'm on the right tangent for him. But then we sit around the table and brainstorm the piece and talk about what we want to say and whether it's relevant to set it completely as a period piece or whether we want to have a modern interpretation of it, which is usually Colin's thrust. Um, working with Colin has been delightful over the years. I've worked with him first with Daughters of Heaven, I think it was, a piece that he brought up from Dunstage to Auckland Theatre Company and he was surprised at what I was able to produce for him. So that started a relationship of trust, which is what it has to be. You have to, I have to value his work and he has to value mine for it to be a really cooperative and wonderful relationship. So I, first of all, I looked at um, the movie Amadeus that was done in the 80s, um, which was based on the play, um, the Schaefer play which was set in Salieri's mind. It's played by uh, Michael Hurst, a fantastic New Zealand actor. And um, so I went from there, and so it's sort of his, his warped perception of the time and Mozart and his wife and the emperor and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of sets the tone of these exaggerated kind of characters um, within the film and the play. So I got the character ideas and who they were, and then I split them into the different colours because the stage um, design is going to, is very, it's amazing, it's all, it's black and white and it's, um, um, Al has done this thing with all the screwed up notes and paper notes with Salieri mm -hmm. getting tired and sick of himself and angry with his bad music and he scrunches them up. So I wanted the costumes to be the opposite of that, very, very bright. So that for the seven main characters who are on stage, they need to stand out and they have to be very, distinct so that's sort of the guideline that I had from Oliver as well to make these um, characters you know sing basically you know Salieri was envious of course as, you know he's going to have green in there so I did lots of dark velvet greens and blacks and you know gold because he's still very wealthy um, designing for period costume has shifted with the internet 
because what I would originally have done is research historical pattern making first and possibly even come up with some what we call toiles which are calico um, versions of historical patterns and then I would have modified them to make them more fashionable myself. Now what I tend to do is do a lot more research online going into fashion houses and seeing themes that come out of say Alexander McQueen or so it may just be ways of draping fabric and I think that's interesting to inform my own process it's not that I copy what they do but it's new trigger points that I would never have been able to see originally I mean I've got massive months of Vogue magazines and so on, Italia and so on. So I did look at them, but I think now it's much, much more current. So I'm responding to what's online in the same way that the audience is. So a lot of our younger audiences are very, very aware of fashion as it is now. Whereas I don't think they were quite so informed when I started. And I find that dialogue really interesting.